You may have already noticed that I have an accent, different accent. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't speak American. So you'll have to pay a little, little more attention to, to understand what I am uh, I'm going to say. In my lessons are prepared to the Indian audience. So sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But one thing I came to know, the word of God is universal. And every time you read a passage of scripture, or every time you hear a sermon, you certainly will learn something from it. That is how the word of God is designed. Any man who reads the Bible all through his life, he will never come to a point that I have learned everything that I wanted to, and there is nothing that I can learn. As nobody can say that nobody come to that, that stage. So from the passage of scriptures that is read uh, in our midst, I want to make a, a, f a few points from this, and uh, I hope this will encourage us and uh, the topic uh, uh, that I, the, the title of this lesson would be like drawing near to God or coming to the presence of God. In, in this passage of uh, scripture, uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 to 31, the first point I wanted to make is Jesus has consecrated a way. Jesus has consecrated a way that people can come to the presence of God. And uh, the Bible says that it is a new way. It is a new way. It is not the old way. We have to stop here a minute and think about the old way that people used to go to the presence of God. The old way was so restricted. Anybody who wants to come to the presence of God are not allowed. We see when the Lord gave the law through Moses to the people of Israel, they have given a boundary that no one should uh, come near that boundary, touch the mountain. The only Moses was commanded to go up to the, the mountain and uh, take the law. And then when the law was in, in force, the tabernacle was there when the Israel people were traveling in the wilderness. And then when the temple was built and the God's presence was in the holiest of holy, only the high priest is allowed to enter that holiest of holy once a year and offer sacrifices for himself before he entered there, and then uh, to do the service that is required to do at that place. And he then was never allowed to come to the presence of God. So many people today read the Bible, but they don't understand the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. They, they think that, you know, they wanted to customize Christianity and pick and choose a few things from the Old Testament and pick and choose something from the New Testament and make their own rules and regulations. But uh, people, good people, honest people, reading Bible, but they are not understanding what is the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. So the Hebrew writer speaks about the way which is consecrated by the blood of Jesus Christ, which is which is sanctified or consecrated by, by Jesus. So he has given us a new access to come to the presence of God. And, and we know that only the high priest used to go. Now all of us can come to the presence of God. And uh, when we talk about this way, it is... Uh, by the way, I'm reading from the uh, New, King, New King James Version. You have, you have many versions, uh, so it would be hard for uh, any foreigner to, to follow up all those, all those versions. So I 
thought I will stick on to just one verse and uh, hope it doesn't contradict, uh, contradict with the uh, things what I wanted to say from here. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, a new and living way, which is consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Now, what is the Hebrew writer speaking about this way? What is this way that he is talking about? Number one, this way is new. Number two, this is consecrated by Jesus. And number two, number three, it says, by the veil of his body or his flesh. That means, uh, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So these are the specific verses, specific verses which clearly says that God is available to all of us and he made an access through his son Jesus and Jesus has consecrated through the veil of his flesh. What does it mean? It means the church. In other words, to say, put it in this way simply, if anybody wants to come to the presence of God in an acceptable way, the only way that the Jesus has consecrated and laid is the church. You cannot come to God without the church. Think about this. Many people today make a big issues of different churches, make the... Uh, uh, make their own churches, make their own rules and regulations. But is really God accepting us when we come to his presence of God? And as Jesus clearly said, there is only one way, except by me. What does it mean to come by me? It is nothing but his church because he is the head of the church and the church is his body. Unless you are in the Lord's church, brother or sister, you are not coming to the presence of God in an acceptable way. Therefore, when the Lord established the church and those in Acts chapter 2 and those who were added to the church daily such as were being saved. So when a person is saved, he is put in the church, he is added to the church by the Lord so that he can have a fellowship with the Lord. Many people today being outside of this way, not being in the church, they think that they have a connection with God. When, when Jesus clearly said that nobody can come to the Father except by me, and to, to make this way, the Son of God has to come to this world and uh, uh, hung upon the cross, lay down his life, shed his blood. Such a difficulty with a great difficulty when the Lord made this way and people come and say that there are so many ways that you can go to the Father. As if God is hunger for the praises of people, the prayers of the people. No, it's not like that. He is a perfect God, had a purpose and you know, he wanted to save his people he wanted to have communication with these people, but he has selected a way, and that way is clearly mentioned in the scriptures. If you deny this, you may think anything, that you may think that you are in the right relationship with God, but brothers and sisters, you cannot come to the presence of God if you are not on the, uh, uh, in this way. So the way is very important. And there is only one way that one can come to, the, uh, come to the Father in an acceptable way. How blessed we are to be in this way. Have you considered? See, when I was in a denomination and when I heard this gospel, it has, this has really attracted me. And uh, for that reason, I wanted to preach. Because there are many people in this world who are not aware of this way. They are in their own ideas, in their, in, this, in their own traditional churches, thinking that their life is right with God. But when I found this, 
I felt like, you know, I found a great treasure and I need to t uh, talk about this to the brethren. So we have to make sure that there is only one way and the way is the church and nobody can come to the Father in an acceptable way to, to pray to Him or to, to worship Him or to have a connection with Him. One has to be in this way. And also, the second point I wanted to see in this is, in this passage, God sets forth the conditions how one can enter in this, in, into this way. The elders or, or, or the, uh, the evangelists or uh, nobody are making the rules, you know, how one can enter in this, into this way. The one who consecrated this way has given us the conditions through the Holy Spirit. If one meets those conditions, then he should, be, he should enter into this way. There is no other, uh, no, no other way. People cannot make their own conditions. Jesus is the author and finisher of the salvation who laid down his life today and gives us a commandments how one can enter into, in, in this way. In verse 22 we see, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Full assurance of faith. So the condition number one is, one must have faith in God. One must believe with all his heart and uh, accept this, this condition to come to the presence of God. And Hebrew writer says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please God. For he, he, for he who comes to God must believe that he that he is, and he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek. So, in order to enter in this way, the first condition one would have is to have faith. And the Hebrew writer talks about the repentance. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. So, the Hebrew writer speaks about the heart and also the, the conscience. These are related to one's repentance. So, to, to turn back from where he is, to when, if he is not in this way, if he is away from this way, he has to turn back, turn back and come uh, into, into this way. So, for which, you know, he needs repentance. So, one must have faith and one must have repentance. And in verse 23, we see, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Confession is necessary for our salvation. Confession is necessary for us to be saved and to be added to this way that the Lord has consecrated. So we have to confess that Jesus is Lord. In Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So, we have to have faith, we have to have repentance, and then we have to confess, and we have to be baptized. The Hebrew writer talks about our bodies washed with pure water. This is nothing but talking about the, the it represents our uh, washing of our bodies with pure water is, is but baptism. And uh, when Peter preached the first gospel sermon in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. We have to repent and be baptized for the remission of our sins. So these are the conditions laid by God because He is the one who is bringing the lost man to come to the presence of God and he has to do a great sacrifice. And now he is giving us some simple conditions that anyone can understand and anyone can obey. So after giving these, uh, these conditions, my third, third point is, there are certain commandments are given to those who are in this way. Certain commandments are given by God that how one has to conduct himself. So, you, you are understanding, isn't it? You are, you, are, you are seeing that what I am trying to say. There is one, only one way and there are conditions given by God 
how one can enter into this way. And once you have entered into this way, you have certain commandments to follow in order to continue in this way. Those are talking about not forsaking the assembly. Not forsaking the assembling of God. We should consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. When we started initially the congregation, people were not paying much attention to come to the to, to assemblies, you know. They have so many other, 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 other priorities. So it has taken a lot of efforts in teaching them and convincing them that the importance of assembly. Dear brethren, many times <clears throat> we neglect services. I don't know about you. As I already told that will be my talking to about my Indian audience. So if, if any small occasion that comes, you know, as I said, there are many social occasions that take place every time. And then if any small occasion came, people want to go to that occasion to enjoy 40 there than coming to the presence of God. One day, I was preaching in our congregation. And uh, one gentleman walked into the congregation, and I was speaking from Proverbs chapter 23. And then I was talking about the, the drunkenness, the, the proverb Solomon talks about in chapter 23. And he was a, a military retired person, and he used to drink. He came to the church, you know, we have not noticed, you know. He came after the services have started, and sat, he sat at the back, he heard. And then he, he, you know, it really touched his heart. And from that day onwards, he has not drunk any, any time. Any time he did not drink. And he, he says that, you know, so proudly that, you know, that one time walking into the church at Maulali has changed my life. And he became one of the, the elders. And this is the man, the lady that you are transferring your money to the preachers, you know, that is his father. And he passed away last year. So what I mean to say is, there may be one lesson. There may be one lesson which changes your life. That, that, that particular day, you may be absent, and you know you are missing a great lesson that you would need, really need, to change and bring you, to, bring you into Christ. So therefore, the, the Hebrew writer is warning the conditions, uh, the commandments is not to forsake the assembly. So uh, we'll see uh, <clears throat> how it works is of what it means to forsake. For example, if I am uh, a habitual, habitual drinker, and uh, I say, uh, brother, I have changed my life, and I'm not going to drink, so I, I forsake drinking. And then I don't drink for three months or four, or four months, and once you come back and see me, I drank. And then would you say that I forsake drinking, or would you say I did not forsake drinking? So you are finding me after three months, once you found me, that I drank. And you come to the conclusion that I did not forsake drinking. Compare that to how many times you have to be absent to say that you are forsaking assembly. I'm not talking about the general sicknesses that we have, some, some, some things, you know, that will hinder us. Uh, that we cannot really make it. But, you know, every one of us have to make every effort to be in the presence of God. If we forsake this assembly, you know, we are breaking the commandment of God. And uh, listen to this. In, in Numbers chapter 15, verses 32 to 36. Numbers chapter, thir chapter 15, verses 32 to 36. Now, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. They put him under guard because it has not been explained what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, The man must surely be put to death. 
all the congregation sh shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So the Lord, so as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside and uh, camp and stoned him with stones and he died. See here we see a man. How many times he broke the law? Law, sab Sabbath law. Just one time. And what did he do? He didn't do a, a grave sin. He just disobeyed the commandment. Pick, he was picking up some sticks. And they were, the, the congregation and Moses was not there enough to put him to death. So they wanted the Lord's approval. So the Lord said that he must be put into death. So this has to warn every one of us who neglect services for any small, small reasons. So therefore, the Lord has consecrated a way. The Lord has given the conditions how one would enter this way. And then after entering into, into this way, we have certain commandments that is not to, forsaking, not to forsake the assembling, but in, instead of you have to do it more in order to encourage. Because we are in this particular path and we are small people when we compare to this, the entire world. The world is going in their own direction. We need encouragement. We need to stir up our minds to do what is right, to encourage one another to sing praises to God, to listen to the word of God, and do what the Lord has commanded for us to do. So this is a congregational thing we need to do, and we cannot uh, neglect this. These are the, the, the commandments that God has given to us. My fourth point is, I will close with five points. So the last two points, the fourth point is, the Hebrew writer is talking about the willful sin and uh, trampled the Son of God underfoot. Trampled the Son of God underfoot. Willful sin. What is a willful sin? What is a willful sin? I believe in this context, the Hebrew writer is talking about all the three things that we just said. If you do not find this way, if you do not accept the way, which is only one way that has been consecrated by Jesus through his flesh to come to the to Father, if you deny it, if you say, no, 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 there is some other way, you know, you are not only the ones who are going to heaven. You know, there are, God accepts everyone. You know, if you make such, such, such kind of stories and not yield to the way that the Lord is speaking in this passage, I believe that's a willful sin. And also, if you, the, if you don't obey the conditions and if you alter the conditions and if you try to make your own rules how one would enter the church, then we are again doing a willful sin. And again, if you're forsaking this assembly. So, my understanding and what I wanted to say to you is, if you neglect one or three of these, these, these three points that I mentioned, the way, the conditions, and uh, forsaking assembly, and neglecting the assembly. If you do these things willfully, you are trampling the Son of God under, under foot. Think about this. We have ambassadors in our, all countries have their own uh, personal um, ambassadors. U.S. has an ambassador in India, and so the Indian, India has ambassador in the U.S. So whatever the Indian government wants to tell to the American president, you know, they will send the message through the, the ambassador. Similarly, the U.S. president, whatever he wanted to communicate, and he would send the message through the ambassador. So if, if the ambassador takes the fax message and goes to the Prime Minister of India, the US President uh, fax message, taking it to the President of India, I mean Prime Minister of India, we have Prime Minister, so, and the Prime Minister read the message and then throw it in the trash, what did he do? He, it's just like slapping on the face of the President. The similarly, when the Lord has given how one can come to the presence of God very clearly that each one of us can understand and you are neglecting this message and you, when you say that there are many ways 
You can choose your own way and go to the presence of God. And you say you can make your own conditions to worship God or to, to have relationship with God. And you say you can come whenever you wanted to come to the church or whenever you don't feel like not coming to the church. You, you can be on your own. When you say this, this is nothing but a willful sin and you are trampling the Son of God underfoot. How great crime it would be, how, how great sin it would be in the sight of God have you ever considered? Dear brethren, people, there are some people, there are some people in this world, we encounter them many times. They read the Bible and think that God is desperate. God is in desperate to, to accept uh, anything, anything we do in order to worship Him or in order to praise Him, prayer Him. You know, He, he just wants, wants, wants from the people. No. The people, you know, have misconception about, misconceptions about uh, His Word. We had a very good lesson this morning about the meditating the Word of God. That is a failure on the part of the people try to understand what the message is. God plainly communicating uh, to us with his word and how many of us are taking it seriously. So the Hebrew writer says the consequences of the willful sin. It is you would be taken vengeance. That means you will stand before God as, an, as his enemy. So who can stand before God as an enemy. We all need his love and mercy and grace towards us. And he looks into our hearts and how um, honestly we are trying to obey the word of God. You know, we can quote many passages like Saul, you know, he did on his own way, you know, when offering sacrifices, when um, the Lord to, told through Samuel to kill all the animals, uh, Amalekites and then the animals, you know, he spared some and he thought that it would please God. That was his own idea and he was rejected. So therefore, we see that uh, the consequences of the willful sin is standing as enemy before God. The Lord said, vengeance is, is mine. I will repay. Imagine, imagine how terrible it would be. One thinking all his life that I am right with God, but suddenly when he goes and uh, appears in the judgment before the, before the Lord, and the Lord says, I never knew you, depart from me, how terrible it would be. We will be standing as enemy to God. So dear brethren, so what is the lesson that we all can learn from here? The very important lesson for all the members of the Lord's church is to take up this message, to let people know that there is only one way. You are, you are presuming there are many ways. You are presuming there are many conditions that you can make on your own to go to the presence of God. No, you are not. Only when these things, whether you are right or wrong, will be revealed on the day of the Lord. And that will be too late for anyone to change his mind or repent of his sin or come to the presence of God. And if you neglect to come to the presence of God when in this body, when in this life. You cannot go to the presence of God when we leave this body and when we leave this, our earth, earthly journey. And that is going to eternal separation from God. That is the, that is the hell. So how terrible it will be if, you, if we are uh, stand as an enemy before God. And one final verse, and I'll bring it to conclusion. Jesus told in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, And do not fear those who kill the body and can, cannot kill, kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Dear brethren, where are we? Are we in this way? If not, the Lord is still being merciful to us, and this way is open to us. If anybody can come into this way by accepting the simple conditions, believing in God and in His Son and the sacrifice that He made, repent of our sins, confess, and then be baptized for the remission of sins. And then we are all encouraged.
to continue to be faithful in assembling, encourage each other, and then we need to be mindful of our, our, our willful sin. Then we will be invited into the kingdom uh, of heaven to be with the Lord forever and ever. If not, we will be standing before the Lord as an enemy, and the Lord says, vengeance is mine. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. If any, anyone of you in this audience and uh, you are subject to the gospel, I encourage you to come forward as we stand and sing.